you can't see my body, but I'm I'm dancing. <laughs> Dang, you've stepped up your game while I've been gone, Troy. Right? This is what happens when I leave him unsupervised. <laughs> right? <laughs> we tried to be supervision, but it was the other way around. Mm-hmm. It's true. Yeah, not not so supervision. Yeah, Troy uh, bullied us into so submission. What, what kind of supervision did you get? Like x-ray vision or laser eyes? Right. I got penetrates concealment, but only when my eyes are closed. <laughs> oh. That's a bummer. Technically, it still works because my eyelids count as concealment. As concealment. Sure. Yeah. Holy smokes, friends. I have to tell you something amazing has occurred. I look into the chat. And what should I see but just a pile, a big steaming pile of links <laughs> from none other than <laughs> Jay Gray, the link wizard. <laughs> hanging out, dropping links like a champ. Uh, Sean's here as well. Good to see you, Sean. A pook has stopped by. Um, this is this is a darn good day to be doing a mutants and master minds monday i am just gonna i was gonna try to be all cute and do some like you know oh we've got a special guest and like you know <laughs> but uh instead i will do this i will say welcome to mutants and master minds monday it is you know we're running a little late not uh not for actually because of tech reasons honestly um just is, honor tradition it is, yeah, right. If we're early, you'd be worried, or on time, you'd be like, what's going on? Yeah, it's familiar inertia, inertia at this point. Right, mm -hmm. yes, exactly. Um, yeah, we show up five minutes early, they know somebody at the company has died. Right. That's right, like yeah. We've, we've been kidnapped and taken to an undisclosed location. <laughs> well, I wave my misty arms in the air, um, and wa da 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 look who it is. Ta-da! I turn this music off. So we have with us Steve, we have with us Alex, and we have with us Crystal. Hi, everybody. Yay, Yay Crystal. Yay. <laughs> I've missed you all. We missed you too. Very yeah. much so. I'm, um, I'm so very... sorry for being away. I mm. And I'm so sorry for screwing up everybody's schedule for the last couple of weeks. No, ma'am. Mm. Nope. Not at all. Oh, Not at all. Um, uh, let's see. Oh, uh, so Jay Gray says, uh, by the way, I'm starting my first ever in-game store drop-in, drop-out oh. M&M game. Where what? is that? Yeah. Ooh. Jay, I think you're in our neck of the woods, if I, if I'm, uh, if I do recall. Uh, Jay says, I'll be doing w one game every week for as long as I live. I think it's as long as I can. Right? Oh, jeez. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, unfortunately, it's canon now. Um, mm -hmm. So as long sorry as you, you live, made that deal with the faith. Yeah. yeah, I'm still yeah. in that boat too. Absolutely. Right. Uh, Jay Gray is on Kameno, so we probably want to do something like maybe at Mox or something, or I don't know. But uh, Troy, I just like to say that we're all in different necks of the wood at this point. Yeah. Also, mm -hmm. at this moment, we are. We are, um, we that are is spread thin across this. Well, just the one country, really. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's true. Um, uh, game store in Stanwood. Well, we'll have to look into that for sure. Um, so here's what we're doing today. We are talking about... Uh, let me tell you how the conf the confluence of all of this stuff came together. Uh, Steve, you mentioned doing the Golden mm -hmm. Age, talking about the Golden Age and, and sort of creating mm -hmm. a setting for it. Right. Um, now, Alex, you are... Um, uh, you are writing a book. I I have written one book and published it, and I'm I've got seventeen more books coming, all <laughs> set in different, uh, mostly in the golden age of comic books. Nice, very nice. So that's your kind of that's like your your area of expertise. And Crystal, you are three hundred years old, and you live off the souls of the guilty, and um, and yeah, you can Troy. That was not for public dissemination. Oh shoot! Well, I'm gonna get it. Um, but yeah, so um. <laughs> Uh, we've got all that. And then somebody was talking on um, Twitter, on the Twitters, as they do, and uh, Drac. And uh, Drac was talking about wanting to create a kind of like a themed noir or golden age, you know, mutants and mastermind or a, a hero play, a, a, a hero tabletop role play game. And I said, mm -hmm. oh, I've got, you know, I've got just the thing. It rhymes with um, disputants and uh, hamster crimes. 
<laughs> and uh, <laughs> Keep going, you know, sorry. He cried. <laughs> it's funny because in my high school campaign, one of our mm-hmm. longest running villains was an evil hamster. Right. Hey, there you go. Who, who did crimes? So there so you are. There you are. Um, but yeah, so it all comes full circle. That was just last night, and here we are. Hamster crimes is a pook. Uh, no vampire doxing, says uh, Michael Mendoza. Um, mm-hmm. Masquerade yeah, this, is sacred. Yep, yep. Um, that's one. That's one violation for you, Troy. Oh right, yeah. Um, many more to come, and you get already... three, and they kill you. Oh, do they really? Mm-hmm. Nice. Um, that that's is one uh... violation, Alex. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Does it count as a violation if I'm explaining a violation? <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh, let's no. get to a vampire bureaucrat. Right. Mine. Exactly. I need to speak to the vampire manager immediately. <laughs> um, okay. So. We mentioned we mentioned a couple different books. Um, I am going to flail about as I love to do. I'm mm-hmm. going to grab um, what I'm going to grab is PDFs. Who wants to talk about what they are? Uh, PDFs that are electronic documents that sort of mimic the more familiar page by page documents you're used to reading. Mm-hmm. It's a new tech feature mm-hmm. on Munes and Mass and Rhymes Monday. You want to try that again, Troy? <laughs> what does that acronym stand for? I don't actually know what that stands for. PDF Portable document format. Pretty dumb funky. Nope. Portable okay. document format. I like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, well, so we've got, uh, we, we mentioned the golden age PDF and mm-hmm. uh, then we have the time travelers codex and within. Correct. There are some good, uh, there are some relevant uh, chapters. Oh, yeah, we have a whole chapter on the Golden Age of Comics in the Time Traveler's Codex. And, mm-hmm. well, a lot of the rules materials for the Golden Age source book, you know, are, are relevant for second edition. A good two-thirds of the Golden Age source book for second edition is, you know, description and how you set a mood and what history was mm-hmm. happening at the time and what, what comics were doing at the time. So it's all, a lot mm-hmm. of it is stuff you can still use. Indeed. So. Now, do you, each of you have your? Um, uh, I think. Oh, oh, Alex, I think maybe your fan is fanning up. It's turned off, so that's not good. Oh, it sounds like there's a bunch of demons whispering in your ear, um, which is fine. I mean, I'm all for usually it. Usually, that's indoor thoughts. I'm sorry, you're getting that outdoors. <laughs> right. That usually doesn't carry <laughs> over onto the stream. Yeah. <laughs> is this still happening? I can. Oh, nope, it kidding. went away. It went away. Okay. Um, all good. All I won't good. futz with it then. No futzing. Um, no futzing. So I am uh, currently, uh, boy, we really make it easy for people to download, to purchase and download the PDFs from our store, which mm-hmm. I love. Um, so as I'm waiting for that, it's almost instant. Um Let's talk a little bit about like, let's talk about just settings in general and things that you, what do we as, you know, uh, people who are looking to create an immersive experience, what should we be thinking about uh, as we begin to sort of knit our thoughts together? Uh, well, I mean, if you're looking to run a golden age campaign, I think your your number one question is, are my heroes involved in the war effort or are they home front heroes defending, you know, defending America at a time when there are less police and less, you know, government resources dedicated to security? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's a key first question to ask. I think there's also, you know, the Nazi question. Like, Mm -hmm. right. Right. There is the, there is the issue of, Nazis are unrelentingly evil, but how much do we portray? I mean, there's right. in the recent Captain Carter episode of What If, I think they did a good job of sort of abstracting Nazis and Hydra into just generic evil that it's definitely good to punch without mm-hmm. going into a lot of detail. But I mean, some, depending on your group and your players, you might want to go into, you know, specific. Uh, the specific cultural mm-hmm. issues or, you know, averting, you know, crimes against humanity or, mm-hmm. I mean, it's, 
things right. that are a lot for one person are empowering for others. So it's important mm -hmm. to absolutely important to find out what your group is okay with. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's really, you know, when you're talking about the, the golden age as a genre, you, you can either, you know, look to, are you looking to, you know, emulate the style of the actual golden age comics, you know, that was very, you know, sort of gee whiz, you know, at the time, um, although very patriotic, or are you uh, taking, you know, for lack of a better term, a more sort of retro golden age approach to things where you're looking at the golden age through a modern point of view and, you know, having, you know, a certain amount of, of hindsight, you know, in terms of how we're interpreting a lot of the things that were, that happened during that time. It's one of the reasons I would prefer putting a golden age campaign stateside. Mm -hmm. And you only mm -hmm. have to deal with the crimes against humanity that America's committing at the time. Right. <laughs> right. Uh, so we've got... That's the other question is how much of, uh, how much of historical issues do you want to cover in detail? But we've mm -hmm. covered that topic a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we've got some interesting thoughts here. So one is um, a, a shocked, a gentleman is shocked. Shocked, he says, mm -hmm. is Alex wearing a tie? Yes. <laughs> Alex is wearing a tie. It felt tired. Alex is a method streamer. He's he's very about you know getting into characters. So. Absolutely, and this is a professional live stream. So yeah, I have a fedora just off stream, but I I didn't like the connotations that fedoras yeah. have in the modern day. Mm, no, shame. yeah, they're Get fun. The green. Yeah, it's a shame they got ruined. Yeah, right. you got to bring that that beard down a little just yeah. to the neck. Yeah. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Just uh, shave from here down. Yep, yep, exactly. Um, let's see what else we got here. Um, yeah, so Looted shares, uh, I'd like to see more noir games. Absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. Sure. I, as somebody who grew up with old episodes of The Spider, or not The Spider, uh, The Shadow. The, and the Shadow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm looking at, uh, am I going to butcher this name? Theron? Mm hmm. All right. Mm hmm. <laughs> You're like, mm -hmm. sounds good to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So looking at tones, superheroes in World War II, or I'm doing Golden Age comics. Those can be two very different things. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah. And I think noir doesn't really have a great place to live because it kind of gets bundled into the Golden Age if you're looking at the stories ask. that way. Yeah. It's very much pre Golden Age, back mm -hmm, when, indeed. you know, superheroes weren't just heroes with fists and maybe a little hypnosis or one gadget. I mean, yeah. this was. Yeah, back when Batman shot Dracula with a gun. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, this is, right. This is back when your superpower could just be boxing or I own a car. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> I love it. Uh, okay, this is, uh, this is great. Um, so Sean mm -hmm. asks, when do you start the campaign? Is it 1930? When the shadow first appeared? 33. When Doc Savage? Uh, was first printed 38. Wow. Um, Sean, I would mm -hmm. expect an answer exactly like this from someone like you, just thorough and brilliant. Mm -hmm. um, appreciated. Uh, yeah. And there are people who talk about, you know, Sean, again, speaking to the fact that sometimes it's good just to be, you know, punch yeah. the bad guys and sometimes not carry a lot of guilt. Punch Nazis. Yeah. yeah. And it's uh, that's cruelty free superhero heroing. Right. Yeah. I mean, as for like what year to start, I mean, you can just say generically 1930s or generically 1920s, unless there are specific historical events you want to roll into everything mm -hmm. in your campaign. Yep. So, mm -hmm. I mean, you don't necessarily have to tie it to when real world comic books started debuting things. You can have super powered, strange visitors from alien planets appear in 1935 or 1934 mm -hmm. or 1900. True. Well, so let's unpack this real quick. Um, Michael Mendoza says all heroes in noir aren't nearly as empowered as heroes in super's genre. Mm, that uh, is true. Oh, so speaking. Yeah, let's talk about that a little bit. What does that mean? Yeah, uh, That's sort of back to what Crystal was talking about, where their power was, I can hit people really hard in the face with my hands. <laughs> right, right, yeah. right. Um, so it's partially, more like... Yeah, partially that, but also, also they just didn't have... They weren't as good at everything as more modern mm -hmm. superheroes would be. Mm -hmm. You had to make compromises, take deals, work with you know the lesser of two evils more often than not, because you couldn't just take the high road all the time. You didn't have the, the luxury of always keeping your hands clean is what mm -hmm. the genre tends to be about. Yeah. 
I mean, even uh, when Superman came out, he was he was literally faster than a speeding bullet. Mm -hmm. Instead of just being a massive understatement like it is now for Superman, where he is still technically faster than a speeder bullet, speeding mm -hmm. bullet, but yep. can also his, fly across the universe in forty seconds. And his power was leaping tall buildings because he wasn't mm -hmm. flying yet. Yep. So Very this true. is this is interesting. So I'm looking at um, you know uh, noir as a as a sort of. Uh, genre always kind of escaped me. I just sort of, in my mind, I just thought mm -hmm. it was sort of like black and white. Um, like just any black and white <laughs> movie in the 30s, noir. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what we're, ten what we're talking about, like, if you're talking in terms of film noir, then that's very much a 1950s film mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. Uh, genre, the, yeah. the noir genre kind of gets tossed around with the old pulps because it, it captures mm -hmm. a lot of that same uh, that same morality. Yeah. Draws on a lot of the old sort of hard-boiled genre of detective mm -hmm. fiction, especially. Gotcha, but the it noir... hasn't really gone away. I mean, I would yeah. say even no. the Marvel Daredevil show is very noir because oh, Daredevil gets the crap kicked out of him all the time, and he's always just bleeding in an alley investigating crimes in that show. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's Michael Mendoza says. Uh, the main trope of noir is how the protagonist gets gets, gets around by yeah, everyone, <laughs> beaten yeah. up a lot. Yeah. I mean, I don't sort think of, that's the main focus, but that does seem to happen a lot. Yeah, yeah. It's a, the 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 put upon uh, protagonist. Um, mm -hmm. let's see, okay. So this is interesting. So uh, Luda says there's more to noir than just golden pre golden age. When taken out of the four color temperament, noir becomes that level of darkness and broiled with a deeper hidden enemy. Even in now times, noir can be like the show Utopia. Uh, mm -hmm. The rest of that is uh, the show Utopia, where there's mild to less powered people trying to find the story behind mm -hmm. the dystopia. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Would you agree with that? I mean, like I, I, uh, I mean, just from a, like a film studies and literary background, it, it mm -hmm. tends to be a lot more about like the morality rather than hidden mm -hmm. enemies. But yeah. yeah, I mean, noir really tends to be about very, very flawed people who are trying to do the right thing, um, but not always getting there, um, yeah. you know, and sort of struggling with yeah. that. And there was certainly a lot more sort of public acceptance that your protagonists could be imperfect following the war when mm. so many people kind of came back a little Emotionally and yeah, yeah. spiritually, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, broken up. Um, Byronic hero is a good literary term to hang on. Noir. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> indeed. I forget all my highfalutin terms. It's been a while. <laughs> well, that's my favorite kind of protagonist, unfortunately. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> so um, I, I don't even know if I should answer this question. You know, Sean asks, uh, "Hey, is not Green Ronan?" Working on to oh you no. Sean I, how did you get that in we have to reset oh. the counter it has now been zero days since someone asked about Vigilante's well now I've got to push the book back again and that's right. how it works Sean you know every time you ask we add five years to the whole timeline <laughs> I'll update the Google uh, calendar you know it was on track to actually start working on that this summer alongside the summer of Starfighter stuff and mm. uh things keep yeah. going off. Things things don't go smooth. Why don't things go smooth? I don't right. know, but I think it has something to do with the Shangs. I really I think it's want... because we're all noir protagonists. Nothing goes smooth for us. Oh, mm -hmm. that's what it is. That's right. A pookie yell at him. Um, uh, Sean says, uh, I had a friend once run a great adventure based on the Third Man film, a fantastic mm -hmm. noir experience. I'm not that's familiar with movie. the film, but I, yeah. I don't know that one. Mm -hmm. I don't either. Um, okay, so um, I mostly just want Humphrey Bogart to show up in a Mutants and Mastermind supplement. And David Body brings up the pulp noir horror stuff, which is mm -hmm. is kind of fun. Uh, do have you? I've not really heard of a lot of people doing um, uh, horror in Mutants and Masterminds. I, am I just not? Uh, we, uh, we have a whole book for yeah, it. The we do. Natural Handbook is is basically okay. a horror handbook. Yeah. 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 I mean, horror tends to be a tricky genre when you're dealing with people who are invulnerable. Yeah. As far as that goes. And we talk about that, you know, uh, in Supernatural Handbook, amongst other things, you know, as far as that goes. You know, oftentimes comic book superhero stuff tends to go a little bit more for creepy than it does for, for horror per se. Yeah. You got to scare the players, not the characters. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I also feel like um, mutants and masterminds, you know, generally as a as a 
experience is very um, uh, bright and fun and like you know it just seems like it has that uh that kind of a thing you know um mm -hmm. I, I enjoy the, that the core yeah. game is kind of built to to smooth over like consequences pretty mm -hmm. quickly yeah. i mean in general consequences from your complications last a scene and physical injuries you bounce back from them just about as quickly as you do from the comic books yeah but yeah <laughs> I dig it. Um, all right, so I have got uh, in my in my uh, gravitational pull the Time Travelers Codex, um, mm -hmm. and if you tell me, and let me see, I'm gonna do a little screen share. Screen share music. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> is that what the screen music share music sounds like? Did you it is, that? it is. I did, I did, yeah. I just hit it play. Was and... screen share music. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wait until the soundtrack comes out this winter. You'll love our Christmas carols. The Eminem developer's Christmas album. Oh, oh God. We've got don't, to. don't even joke about that. We've oh, no. got to. But you want okay. to fast forward to page 72. Yes. 72. Boop. Boop. Boop, 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 boop. And it's even 72 on the PDF document, which is so cool. Right? <laughs> Usually that's off by a page or two. When it's, it is off PDF. on the page. It, well, it's off when I tried to go Look there. Up so. on your copy. <laughs> My copy is correct. <laughs> I just bought mine from the store. Oh, no, Troy. I know, right? <laughs> All right, so here we go. I'm going to uh, let's change our view to Uno instead of a tubla. Um, pop. And, and, ta da! Here we've done it. All right, great show, everyone. <laughs> See you next week. Tip your waiters. See you next week. Tip your waiters. Okay, so who have we got here? Who are these, uh, who are these characters? Oh, God, that's the Patriot fighting some Nazis. And in the background, yes. you can see the original Johnny Rocket. Yep. Ah. Uh, this is the cover for the original Golden Age source book that we repurposed into a mm -hmm. chapter heading. Indeed. And is that just regular skull? Uh, that's, that's just regular skull. That's Totenkopf. <laughs> Totenkopf's <Yes>. head. <laughs> just regular skull. <laughs> <laughs> sort of that's, that's tan skull. Sort of beige skull. <laughs> beige skull. <laughs> oh, nefarious. <laughs> Really into there's, the earth there's, tones. There's little that's more evil than beige. <laughs> Do not make fun of me, Patriot. Truth, yeah, truth. He's about, he's about twice as bad as Terracotta Skull. Mm -hmm. Oh Vegan yeah. Vegan yeah. red dye. <laughs> <laughs> he probably comes from like Orange County, California, where everything is beige. It's just all <laughs> shades of taupe. Um, <laughs> Okay, so awesome. So uh, looks like we got some information about just kind of living, how you live. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep, uh, just a general discussion about like how how life in society is changing starting around, you know, the 1920s, 1930s mm -hmm. in America and how the the Great Depression sort of kicked off these mass migrations and a change in how farming works, how industrialization works, all of that. Yeah. And gotcha. Sort of gives you some background for, you know, where your character might be coming from or, you know, what might be setting your criminals up, you know, what kind of flavor your city has. Yeah, very interesting. And also some real boundaries on, you know, like you've got to really contend with some of this stuff, you know, like a world war or the Great Depression. Well, if you said it in the 1930s, there there isn't a world war that America's yeah. involved yeah. in yet. Right. <laughs> It's coming. Uh, Crystal actually played in a scenario I ran in 1939 on the stream last year. Mm -hmm. That was American super soldiers getting involved before America did in the war. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. I remember oh, I punched man. a Teutonic tart. Yes. <laughs> Teutonic tartlet. Tartlet. <laughs> Just a smaller tart or... Uh... <laughs> I wasn't I sure, but that, that phrase will never leave my lexicon. Mm -hmm. Mine either. No, no thank it. you for that gift. Mm -mm. <laughs> right? I don't know why it makes me just a little hungry. That is one of the fun things about uh, gaming in the golden age is you can get out all those fun alliterations because, yes. you know, you couldn't really swear in books back then. There there were publishing codes, and so you had to get creative with your, your curses. Yep. 
That's true. Yeah, you can get it as, as corny as you want in your mm -hmm. Golden Age game, pretty much. I do love that we're inspiring some of the most boring Don't villains. Boring. <laughs> I saw Red no. Skull. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, the Red Skull. And, uh, and then David Body is already working on lyrics. Um, thank you for that, my friend. Uh, definitely appreciated. Can't wait for the full song so we can sing it to you. Um, uh, you know what, I, what I've learned about Sean Vieira is that Sean is a huge fan mm -hmm. of... Uh, of uh, Mutants and Masterminds art and has oh. actually um, mm -hmm. connected with uh, artists and uh, commissioned them to, you know, uh, do stuff for him. Yeah. Cool. Nice. Just like three, he's got like 3,000 pictures of himself uh, <laughs> as a Mutants and Masterminds uh, hero. But uh, no, I just really well, thought that was like great. three pictures of myself as a kobold, so. <laughs> right? <laughs> so who are we to judge? Right. I've got one picture of me with my head photoshopped onto a body of a naked mole rat. So, <laughs> yes. So who's winning? Hmm? I think it's me. All right. Yeah. Sorry. Troy's winning. Right. Yeah. Uh, Jonesy, good to see you, my friend. Um, good to see you indeed. Uh, all right. So, uh, well, we touched on the good people, bad choices, kind of the nitty gritty. Mm -hmm. Got to do some bad stuff. Illinois Nazis. Illinois yep. Nazis. That's a yeah. That yeah. This is going to surprise everyone, but at one point in time, there were a lot of Nazis in the United States. What? Mm -hmm. Nazis in the United States? That's ridiculous. I know. Mm -hmm. It seems set like it seems like such an alien concept now. I'm glad. We but really anyway, does. Anyway, anyway, if you play a Golden Age game, you can you can live in a fantastical time when there are Nazis here in America. You can just punch. Right. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. You can yeah. go to Henry Ford's factory and punch him right in the face, and nobody will say anything. <laughs> Oh wow! I well, love he, it. he might turn around and build some sort of, you know, Model T X, where <laughs> right. you know, the car transforms into a steampunk robot and fights you. Well, right, I'm a yes. for steampunk, but Henry Ford was old at the time, yeah, so. but he'd still be into it. Oh, yeah. he would be. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Just stubbornly, stubbornly into it. Right. Um, okay, organized crime, of course, the theme <laughs> of the era. Oh yeah. Yeah, the 1930s, the big opponent in the 1930s was organized crime and mobsters then, yeah. yeah later mm -hmm. on actually during the superman the very first superman comic he was punching a uh crooked landlord yep mm. indeed straight I mean, out the you know the depression uh and prohibition led to a huge growth in organized mm -hmm. crime in america so you know in the late 30s and into the early 40s gangsters were the classic bad guys that's mm -hmm. where you got the you know the the notion of guys with tommy guns robbing banks you know as as a you know opponent that superheroes were fighting it's a weird thing because at the time the ones who robbed banks were kind of considered folk heroes right yeah exactly yeah. they were your uh, robin hoods of the time it wasn't until you know they started endangering, you know, the public in general that people turned against them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that money's insured anyway, so it's fine. You know, I'm looking. Oh, oh look, that's what this. I'm, what I'm hearing is we're going to have to start running a gangster's game set in the golden age. Seriously. <laughs> Seriously. Every, that'd be no fun. No superpowers, but everybody's a very colorfully named gangster with some mm -hmm. kind of special talent or physical <laughs> different Psst. ability. So right. What if we all used to be hench people for different supervillains, and then we were like, nah, mm -hmm. we're going to do our own thing. Uh, that's, that's a good idea. I like it. Well, well, we, we kept our uniforms. Supervillains back then, but maybe <laughs> right. we all worked for different mad scientists. There were a lot of mm. mad scientists at the time. Right. right. We can be, yeah. We can be yeah. like the early Spider-Man villains, you know, where your your power was like, I have a lasso, and the other guy is like, <laughs> I'm really tall. You know, oh. <laughs> yeah. I've got long arms. Yep. Yeah, laugh, yeah. Exactly. I love those guys. Yeah. My yeah, bad me too. Me. <laughs> well, so Batroc the Leaper. I mean, he, he mm -hmm. was a part of Kingpin's gang, but I just love that his sure. superpower was jumping. Yep. Ooh, we got that noise back. Um, oh, sorry. I'm not sure. Um, yep, gone. Um, so, uh, so the question now is, do we pick our, you know, our, our, not, I guess, our skills, really. <laughs> it's not really <laughs> power so much as just <laughs> skills. Right, or do we shticks. let, yeah, our shtick. So I guess what we can do yeah. is uh, maybe let the chat just sort of pick. Um, I think Troy's got to have some kind of obfuscation. Like, well, right. I mean, like right? the yeah. shadow, like he can mesmerize people, or maybe he's got smoke bombs. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Chat, what do you think? 
Yeah, or maybe one of those like spinny things on a little wheel, and it's just sort of like. Oh yes, the classic hypnosis hat. Thing. You're oh, hypnotized. Yeah. I thought you were uh, talking about a top. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a short guide to building characters in different genres would be a really cool idea. Looted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, be, looted shares. That might be a series for the. The what you call the it, the Ronin Roundtables. Yeah. That yeah, cool. fun, fun, fun. Um, hey, I want to uh, acknowledge uh, a one uh, Christopher Premas is here uh, and says, like the Abraham Lincoln Brigade fighting fascists in Spain in the 30s, but supers instead. They were later branded mm. the premature anti-fascists. Of course, you can never start fighting fascism too early. Truth. Mm-hmm. Now, is that like a real thing that happened? Was that oh, like yeah. a real, as a human, like a, oh, in, if, if Chris Premis mentioned it, you can count on it being real. Right. Thing. Absolutely. <laughs> well, Mercy knows we needed another encyclopedia in the audience. Uh, you and the Sean's are going to have to have some kind of mm -hmm. encyclopedia off. Uh, but uh, let's see here. Uh, this do, 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 do. Yes. check sure, out the no, book. Please. Hitler in Los Angeles, how Jews and their spies foiled Nazi plots against Hollywood and America. Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Sure. Thanks, John. I mean, I'm currently um, working my way through Cigar City Mafia, but. So uh, what is Cigar City Mafia? <laughs> oh, uh, it is a history of organized crime around the Tampa Bay area mm. uh, oh. set in the 1920s and 30s. That's interesting. Yeah. I've yeah. been wanting I've been wanting to dig into like Seattle, uh, you know, crime or Seattle, sort of the development of downtown. I want to find a book that's sort of, it's really uh, some bizarre stuff that happened way back in the yeah, day. So little piece of advice, because I'm a history nerd, go to your local bookstores or Barnes and Nobles, uh, look for the local interest sections because mm. those always have the weird, super quirky local histories that you can't find anywhere else. That's mm -hmm. totally true. And if you're going to run a game in uh, or a golden age game, then absolutely get one or two books because they will be filled with all kinds of cool campaign ideas. What a like, great idea. That's there solid. Is, there is a campaign villain ready made in Cigar City Mafia who is, mm -hmm. uh, oh, I can't remember the Spanish for it, but his name translates to the White Shadow because he's the. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> like, that is a perfect super villain name. Right. Well, so, so then, then, so we've talked about the protagonist. So when we're talking about the villain, are they just basically like, I'm the guy that chews with the mouth open, you know, like <laughs> what? I mean, yeah, it depends yeah. on your game, but a lot of them are going to be, you know, gangsters or the other classic trope for the, the golden age or mad scientists. And then of course, mm -hmm. you know, Nazi spies and yep. Nazi mad scientists and Nazi gangster mad scientists. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> La Sombra Blanca. Oh, and Giant Apes. Yes. Mm -hmm. La Sombra Blanca. Thank you, yep. Yep. Um, A lot of one-time, one-use villains, too. Usually mm -hmm. villains oh, of yeah. the age don't come back. Oh, right. Yeah, the, yeah. The two. yeah they will die because... Yeah, oof. they have an unfortunate tendency to die off. Oh, or, I love this. Or die uh, mysteriously and then come back. Well, or here's a canon. Oh, go ahead, please. I was gonna say a lot of superheroes' powers back then were just gun. So, right, <laughs> right. I cast forty five. Bam. Gun and crankiness. Right. <laughs> Bad mood. Um, Sean Duggan says, uh, out of curiosity, are the Freedom Brigade still removed from the main continuity by Doc tomorrow to fight on Erd? Uh, well, I mean, they were still they still exist in the nineteen forties. He pulled them out after the war. Right. So they are. They are out there, but also here, because time travel's weird. Just right. Ah, so this you, is great. If you go back to 1944, you can team up with the uh, the Freedom Brigade. But if you go to 1947, eh. Not so stuck with the Liberty League. Chris, thank you for uh, verifying that the Abraham Lincoln Brigade was, in fact, a real thing. Um, mm hmm I like it. I like they, it. They were not, however, aided by steam steampunk Abraham Lincoln, in spite of in spite of these stories to the contrary. What about, what about funny? vampire Abraham Lincoln? Oh, Vampraham Lincoln, <laughs> or Frankenstein Abe Lincoln? Oh, he's tall. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's not a hat he's wearing. That's not a hat. That's a flat oh. thing. That's his head. It's just filled with migraine. Um, I know the feels. Frank. Okay, so now we're talking about so okay, like sports of the times so where we were talking. I think baseball, mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Well, the entertainment in general, uh, you know, describing what's popular, film is becoming a huge, like, not just a special occasion thing, but something you go to all the time for your entertainment. Uh -huh. you, know, you know, music is available in the home now over your wireless radio set. It's amazing. Yes. You've got to try what? it. Right? Oh, wow. That sounds amazing. Maybe I have a career in whatever that's called. Right. Um, some some really rich folks have those newfangled television sets. Oh, but okay. it'll never catch on. Like no. so you're gangsters and your mad scientists. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a fad. Uh, they also have entertainment uh, atomic weapons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's entertainment. No uh, technology. <laughs> <of the> era. <laughs> <laughs> atomic weapons were entertainment in the 50s right that was when people oh, started going oh. and watching all the bombings mm -hmm. like the really depressing real fast <laughs> yeah dark <laughs> yeah bleak um, let's see here okay so what's up with computers now that they would just fill the entire mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah if yep. you want a computer it's basically going to be a headquarters feature Right. right and it basically yes. you just put in As a card and it says yes that equals 10 <laughs> Yeah, as as the the saying went from scientists at the time, computers worked in the hall in the office down the hall and used a slide rule, and they were usually very nice folks. <laughs> right. <laughs> we mostly got to the moon based on you know very nice ladies with slide right. rulers. Indeed. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so robotics, fun. Yeah, mm -hmm. I could see some fun with that. Yep. Oh, of course, jet aircraft, rockets, the whole that whole thing. Yep, rocketry uh, was brand new. Uh, robotics had just come into the public imagination. Mm -hmm. Radar was a brand new thing in World War II. Rocketeers are really cool. Oh, yes. rocketeers are great. Yeah, that's immediately where my, where my mind went. Um, what if what, do you, what if we attached rockets to some sort of nocturnal mammal? <laughs> <laughs> right, like Raccoon a rocket tears. possum. The rocket possum. <laughs> <laughs> I rocket love possum it. sounds like a fighter wing in World War yeah. II. The rocket possums, yeah. Yeah, and possums are very inspirational. I'm thinking of a comic we can write up right I, now. I kind of want to do a Captain Carrot and the Zoo Crew Golden Age campaign with mm. all of these. Like rocket possum yeah. and uh, <laughs> I don't know. Like... You, you remember the Captain Carrot story where Fastback actually meets his Golden Age counterpart, the amazing What's It? I don't, actually. Yes. Huh. Yes, the speedster turtle from World War II. Yeah, you have to understand, my comic collection as a child was very much made up of, like, quarter bins. Mm, or, yeah. like, discount bundles they would sell at the uh, grocery store or yes, the yeah. everything store on the corner. So that. it's, like, seven unrelated issues in a Ziploc bag. <laughs> right. And oh. it's a dollar for all of them. And half of them are, like, in the middle of a story. Yep. So. I love this. Uh, you know, so uh, I'm, I'm very uh, interested in, in these kinds of resources. Um, uh, Sean Vieira shares that if you're interested in Canadian comic books uh, during the Golden Age, check out the great Canadian comic books written by uh, Nelvana Animation Studio. Yeah, that's great. Um, mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm curious for the folks who are, you know, um, for us, but uh, especially people who are in the chat, what are your resource books when it comes to this stuff? Where do you, where do you kind of, uh, as opposed, you know, we know you've got the, the full suite of mutants and masterminds, you know, the library there at your fingertips, right. but yeah. What are some of the other things that you look at? Um, oh, and kind of, this is interesting. I'm not familiar with this. Mm -hmm. Adam punk. Oh, Adam mm -hmm. punk is fun. Punk it's, is yeah. it's the sort of like the 1950, 40s and 50s yeah. sci-fi genre, 50s, like yeah. rocket ships and fins on your shoulder and bubble oh, sure. helmets. Did you ever play Fallout, Troy? <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, that's, that's exactly what I'm point. thinking. Yeah, it's yeah. before the Fallout. <laughs> right. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. I keep the, kind of American modern, you know. Sp spaceships that look like Edsel's, you know. Mm -hmm. Cool. Very cool. <laughs> Edsel's. 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 <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see, uh, we've got, uh, Sean Vieira says, um, atomic weapons, uh, was researched, uh, in the U S Britain, Germany, USSR and Japan before the first was successfully created. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. I mean, so how, how much, you know, at what point do you draw the line, um, when you, uh, are getting historical? Uh, when it gets I mean, in the way of the fun. Yeah. yeah. People's eyes start to... I, I like to use like a, 
a made up city or a city that my players might not be as familiar with. Like if I ran for you guys, we would absolutely set it in golden age Tampa because I'm the only one who knows Tampa that well. (laughs) 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 But you guys could latch on to things like, you know, Cuban sandwiches and cigars and like, Oh, mm -hmm. sure. And alligator men, alligator men. Yeah. Right. I love that. Yeah. So that, yeah, that's super, that's super fun. Um, let's yeah, I see. I usually go looking for something weird that mm-hmm. doesn't have a real good explanation. Like the, like the story I ran for crystal last year, mm-hmm. for some reason, Hitler sent the occult brigade to Poland to look for a path to Shambhala. Mm-hmm. Hey. <laughs> and I was like, well, that's weird. I'm going to write a story about what happens if they actually found it there. <laughs> Uh, Jacob Blackbone said, uh, you know, it uh, helps uh, to be from a particular area. <laughs> yes. True. So true. So true. Florida man in a fedora is still Florida man. You, everybody likes to knock Florida, but you hear all the crazy stories out of Florida because Florida has more lax laws on crime reporting. Uh, mm. The only reason you don't hear these stories from every other state in the union is because they can't mention specifics about right. those cases. That's exactly true. And you know, don't uh, think for a second there aren't people just as stupid living right next door to you. Well, exactly. <laughs> or maybe you're that person. All right. Um, but no, I, actually, Chris, well, that's really an interesting thing. I, I never really get into that issue primarily just because, you know, it's kind of fun to pick on Florida. Um, but, but you're absolutely right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They, they, sure. they kind of have a little bit of a cottage industry around sort of the, you know, sharing the craziest of the wildest and the, you know, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, it has a reputation for being crazy, but have you been to Ohio? <gasps> yeah, right. Well, Indeed. yeah, exactly. Have you been to, you know, Sumner, Washington? Jeez. Yeah. Um, we don't yeah. need bath salts to eat people's faces in Ohio. <laughs> That's just a regular habit around here. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's basically the post-apocalypse. Nobody talks about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's um, what I'm hearing from people. Yes, yeah, yeah, so every rush at- hour is a war boy incident. There's guitars and flamethrowers. It's crazy. <laughs> so does, I mean, you know, I have the same kind of, you know, library. Sometimes I look at this stuff and, uh, yeah, news of the weird definitely mm. does. Um, but I, I, my library is definitely more suited towards, I, well, I've just like tripled quadrupled my library with uh, green Ronin books, but yeah. I, you know, and I've got more dice than you can mm-hmm. shake a stick at, but, uh, the you know my stuff is all very uh, word related very sort of like you know i kind of mm-hmm. like some obscure references uh you know reference material and stuff um so crystal's idea of going to your local bookstore because they're gonna curate some of that fun um some of that fun stuff uh what are some other sort of like what are some must-haves when it comes to um well i mean if you're doing a Golden Age game, uh, it's a good idea to just have a good general history, you know, in terms of uh, getting a sense of where you want it, when you want to start, as well as where, and, you know, how you sort of want to space out how time passes in your game, uh, you know, because obviously there are, you know, there are historical events waiting in the future. Uh, for uh, the players to encounter them in one way or another. And so you have to you know, say, okay, if I'm starting my Golden Age game in 1939, how long before we get to Pearl Harbor Day? Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, right. Um, and you know, where are the characters going to be when that happens? Very interesting. You know, Apoog mentions uh, like, uh, like being able to draw on alternative history researchers, conspiracy books, ancient aliens. Oh, yeah. Uh, that time life set. Do you you see? You remember those? Oh, I have yes. them still. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I love them. They're just absolutely yeah, dumb. Yeah. But yeah, my, uh, I mean, my go-to for any time you're talking about a specific time in history is go watch one or two movies that came out that year, mm-hmm. just to get a sense of you know what people were thinking, what was in the pop culture, what what felt important and how did they talk? How did they look? How did they dress? Right. You know, it kind of gets you excited for, for that period, that place in time. Mm-hmm. Sets like the to mood. Read newspapers yeah. from the year that the game is oh, taking yeah. place too. Mm. Oh. Cause there's a, usually hundreds of thousands of newspapers that you can grab from all over the world online yeah. these days. You know what I bet would be really interesting to help sort of inform um, would be what patents were filed. 
look in an mm-hmm. old patent book. That would be interesting. Yeah, that is actually. Pull, pull up a, just a bunch of really odd. I'm yeah. not sure if you've ever taken a spin through a patent. You know, they're just, they're lovely and they're crazy and amazing. Um, if but if you really one, want to test your historical scenario, oh, sorry, take it to a convention and the oh, players no. will tell you everything no. that you got wrong yeah. afterwards. Crystal, um, what were you going to say? I was going to say, if you've got a really good local library, uh, mm-hmm. look up catalogs from that time period. Oh, you know, yeah. Good call. Yes. Get a sense for what luxuries were available and just if they were, you know, something that the average person on the street could afford or if they were just yep. outrageous, like a television set for $50. No one could pay for that. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, David Body says um, uh, maybe we should look at making a Welcome to Night Vale source book. I do love Welcome to Night Vale personally. <laughs> that would be quite a license. That like would be five years too late. I think so. Yeah, yeah. They're still they're still kicking, but uh, yeah. Let's see. Yep. Um, couple. Uh, Jacob says my go to Golden Age source book mm-hmm. is the Golden Age Champions book by Darren Watts. Darren's nice. book is terrific. Yeah. Nice, nice, nice. Uh, Apook says any book by Peter Lavenda or Joseph P. Farrell. Nice, excellent. Um, and then uh, Dave Watts says, yeah, oh yeah. I found a real patent mm-hmm. for World War II explosive that was disguised as a chocolate bar. I've seen that. Yes. <laughs> there, there was also a whole thing about um, explosives that were designed as uh, disguised as flour um, <laughs> that you could you could bake into things. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> they just throw like some cookies at you know people or like you know <laughs> I'm imagining cookies and run. <laughs> I'm imagining Hitler in his in his kitchen baking cookies and all everything just explodes. It's wearing an apron. They try, baby. They try. <laughs> uh, and on today's baking blog, we are going to be making cookies. <laughs> uh, uh, what is Pharaohsburg? Ferroberg is the setting that's being built into the Vigilante's Handbook. Oh, you, Mike, I can't yes. believe you tricked me. Now we've got another five years. we got to wait. <laughs> right? You know, uh, we've got five minutes left. And um, I think we touched on a lot of fun stuff. We didn't really get super crunchy, which is fine, too. Um, I got to say. Go ahead. Yeah, if you're, if you're going to be building a Golden Age game and you're not – you're putting it pre-superpowers – I just mm-hmm. want to say, uh, pick up the talent powers PDF for yes. the power profile series, because that's oh. a lot of superpowers that aren't superpowers. Nice, nice. Oh, Mike, you had no idea. Mike says, "I'm so sorry, <laughs> <laughs> Mike." Yeah, you just, you, yeah, it's uh, it's not your fault. Blame the Shans. Just find a, sh- just pick mm-hmm. a Sean at random from the chat, and it will be their fault. Uh, most certainly. Um, okay. Well, so now it's two fifty six. I cannot even believe it. We just jumped into this topic and had so much fun. Everybody's diving in, got all those creative uh, juices flowing. Mm-hmm. And just as we're ready, then it's time to go. Um, right. Yeah. So Troy, do we want to, do we want to tease people about upcoming announcements regarding things like character sheets? Yeah. Well, you know, uh, now that we've got everybody, you know, sort of, uh, relatively, um, you know, uh, near or home ish, um, at least they'll be on this program. We are going to do some sharing next week of character sheet work that's been done for mutants and masterminds it is a <laughs> chef's kiss if i had lips you would hear them um kissing the tips of my fingers much like a chef that i've never met or seen actually in real life do such a thing but i do believe we've got a couple people so um uh i'm excited to get a kind of do my own thing. Um, uh, I am the head of the VTT team for Green Ronin with everybody's help. We p- got some great things coming. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you might, I would, I would say don't read anything into this, but boy, we're sure getting a lot of work done before September. <laughs> <laughs> There's I wonder what's what hap- gaming event happens. Is, is there something happening? It's, well, yeah, all of them, apparently. Because- all of them, all of them. Exactly. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, we're, we're gearing up uh, for that, but we will, we'll show off the, the character sheet and we may, uh, we may even uh, uh, invite some people to come hang out with us. 
um, because, you know, uh, they might have had a hand in, uh, you know, some of this good stuff. Um, really looking forward to that. Uh, it's been a real delight of a, of a project. It's been, you know, for it's sort of like um, a, a, those nesting dolls that you just keep opening and you're like, Oh, there's more. Oh, there's more. Oh, there's more, it's but it's just going another doll. You're right, it's just another, doll. but it's going the opposite way. It's just bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely a project, but, um, we're, we're getting there at, to the very least, we're going to be able to, um, share that with, uh, with everybody next week. So you want to come check it out. Uh, mm -hmm. You also may want to, if you're not already, you want to head over to the Patreon, which is just a booming, by the way. And uh, you want to go to patreon.com slash mutants, A and D masterminds. And, you know, everybody that's um, a patron, they get to test the character sheet. They get to play. They get a, they can poke at it just alone. They can run a game. They can play a game. But we're gearing up for that. And, uh, you know, you can get in on the ground floor for what is it? Is it three bucks or four bucks? That can't be that cheap. Is it that cheap? It's amazing. I can't believe it. It's valuable. It's valuable. I mean, like, you know, and not, not only that, but when you sign up for that, that lower um, price, you get, you get a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. You just get, we have 111 patrons right now. Um, uh, lots of people jumping in to play the, um, to sign up for character sheet testing. But um yeah, you know, get in, get in uh, on the ground floor, and uh, you know, hang around. And uh, people who hang around for uh, three months, uh, we they will get a t shirt from us. Now, depending on your tier, you might pay a little more, you might pay a little less. Uh, you mm -hmm. might pay it for free. You might pay it for free. You might get it for free if you are up the top, uh, the tippy top we will, tier. We will let you pay us for free. You pay us, wow. we will not charge you to pay us. That is true. That's a good deal. A, I like this plan. Yeah. Yeah. We know a bargain and we know how to sell it. <laughs> Just let Troy talk about it. <laughs> Sold. Uh, smackaroons. Yeah. Only three smackaroons. So check it out. Um, that'll be a lot of fun. Okay. So, um, Steve, do you have anything you want to share before we jump off here? Mm, you know, just stay safe, folks. You know, be careful. Take care. Look out for yourselves, your loved ones. That's right. Mask up. How, how about you, Alex? Uh, well, I don't have. We don't have a game tonight. We're taking the week off. But if anybody is going to be in Columbus in September for Origins, I will be running six Mutants and Masterminds games that you could sign up for, including two Golden Age games. Nice. Wow. Are you going to be at? Uh, uh, I think it's pronounced Yen Con. Uh, not in person, but I'm sure Troy will put me to work in something online. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 I will. Chances are good. And Crystal, I've got to tell you, you are a sight for sore eyes. We Aww. miss you terribly. Uh, it's wonderful to see you. Um, and, uh, you know, everybody is just glad that uh, that you're able to pop in today for sure. I'm certain you saw the chat. People were very, very happy to see you. Uh, anything you want to share or talk about? or? Uh, I mean, I ask people, get yourselves vaccinated. If you're vaccinated, then hunt down family members and friends who are unvaccinated. And I mean, at this point, I, I think we can declare it open season. Get yourself a trank rifle, load it up with vaccine, <laughs> get out there and do your part for America. Come on, mm -hmm. for, for, do it for the children. Um, At least yeah. do a heavy shaming. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I, your wag. I also thought um, once you're vaccinated, can't you just bite people? Is that not the um, way that works? No, no, you're thinking of lycanthropy. Oh, right. I am. Yes, right. That's a different episode. Um, with that, everybody, uh, the three of you, lovely, lovely to hang out with you. Um, uh, again, Crystal, uh, just please as punch to see you. And uh, uh, Pook, we'll leave it on this. He says, Trank a fool for America. I love it. Jones says, message. for peace. I love it. Thank you, everybody. Looking forward to talking about why we never see Troy on the full moon. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's right. That's exactly right. Uh, yeah. Mike, you're welcome. Mike Derling says, thank you all. Hey, everybody, thanks for hanging out with us. We will see you. Um, hey, you know what? Uh, stop by uh, on Thursday. We have Thursday with mm -hmm. the nicest man in the biz, Owen Casey Stevens. Uh, just mm -hmm. a tremendously amazing, wonderful human being. And What will uh, he stat up this week? Who knows? Ooh, yeah. Well, if you apparently missed the Spider Boys episode. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, if you want to, uh, you, you, if you miss an episode, then you're so far behind. You got to watch it all of them. You know, and it's just really. <laughs> but uh, send a note to let's play at greenronin.com if you want us to talk about something and maybe you have a question or maybe you've got some insight or some thoughts uh, about how something works with me and some masterminds or you want. Uh, we do a lot of adjudicating that happens as well. So you know, send us uh, send us your disputes and we shall judge you. And uh, or if you've got something you want to send. Uh, uh, Owen, a um, you know, like a, a creature of some kind, some kind of uh, never before seen, um, you know, beast. Um, then uh, you know, send that over, and we'll do um, send over to let's play at greenrunner dot com, and we'll do a stat this. And then I have one last thing. It's th- I know it's three minutes after, but we are working with our friends at um, Sirenscape. Mm-hmm. So th- we've got all kinds of, you know, I was g- trying to get the, um, uh, the audio to play. It wasn't. And so I just had oh. to make noises and stuff. And that was just uh, <laughs> not as pleasant as the real thing. I'm pew, telling pew. you, pew, pew. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, it was <laughs> really, I mean, it's incredible. So we'll get it working. We just got to figure out how to plug it in with Restream. But uh, stay tuned for that because we've got some Starhaven sounds in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, real good. Yeah, I'm stuff. looking forward to getting back onto Starhaven ASAP. Just Heck yes. yeah, gotta gotta kind of look at the giant smoking crater I left in my way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. We'll you work know, that it, crater it, in somehow. It will be the fall <laughs> of Starhaven instead of the summer. You know, we can. Yeah, it's in yeah. the bottom right corner of the star, right? That's the, the September impact of Starhaven. The <laughs> September of Starhaven. <laughs> All right. Again, wonderful to see everybody. Have a great rest of your week. Um, and uh, we'll see you Thursday or next Monday for certain. Goodbye. Bye, everybody. Bye, Bye everybody.